This conference will now be recorded. Good evening. It is Thursday, August 27, 2020. It's 6.30 p.m. We will call our meeting to order after establishing a quorum through our roll call. If you'll uh, indicate if you're present when I call your name. Council Member Josh McCabe? Here. Thank you. Council Member Kenny Kernshaw? He emailed us that he would not be attending tonight. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Priest? Here. Thank you. Council Member Mikowski? Here. Council Member Easton? Here. All right, we have a quorum of council members present. So we will move on to our public presentations and input, and we'll turn it over to the city secretary uh, to uh, introduce any of our speakers. Um, Mayor, we have several tonight. So the first one is Richard Pennick. Mr. Pennick, are you on the phone? I am. Are we good to go? We're good to go. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Shannon. I'm here tonight to request that the council add an item to their agenda for the next meeting, specifically to discuss the feasibility of converting the current sewage billing calculation to a wastewater averaging method. If you're not already aware, wastewater averaging is the practice of using water consumption during the late fall and winter months to gauge the amount of wastewater discharged from a home into a city's sanitary sewer system. Wastewater averaging references usage during those months because it makes it much easier to estimate the actual volume of water which flows directly into the sewer system. The reason it's used is it's currently the most reasonable calculation of wastewater billing. It more accurately captures water consumption that actually receives sewage processing. It also encourages conservation of household usage. Among cities who use it are those who range in size from Fort Worth and Austin to middle-sized cities like Denton and Corpus Christi, but also small towns like Trophy Club, Argyle, Prosper, and Roanoke. There's a special consideration here which piques my interest, and that is that the Chisholm subdivision, which is on the east side of 3433 at the Newark city limit, behind those schools, we have a unique arrangement because the neighborhood straddles the Rome-Newark border, Rome bills it for the water usage, and Newark bills it for sewage. The Newark billing calculations are based on water consumption figures provided by the city of Rome. Consequently, the 54 or so households in this neighborhood are subject to policy directives of both councils, one of which periodically fails to consider its unique predicament. This was evidenced in February of this year when Newark, for the second time in seven years, discarded a longstanding billing cap on residential sewer billing. The result is dramatically higher sewer bills during the summer because the figures delivered to Newark for this neighborhood include water used to fill swimming pools and used by sprinkler systems to water yards and foundations. In short, water which does not flow into the sewer pipes. The city of Rome, by implementing a wastewater averaging system, will have the capability to ensure that all Rome water customers are treated equitably for sewer billing. So in conclusion, while I'm happy to report that Newark in their last meeting just reinstated a sewage billing cap, I respectfully request that this council study the feasibility of wastewater averaging in order to achieve equitable wastewater billing for every Rome resident. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, next is Joanne Wilson. Yes, ma'am. This is Joanne Wilson, 240 West First here in Rome. Mayor and council persons, I am requesting a determination from the city relative to who is to maintain ditches and easements. In the past, a former TOSI attorney, Mr. Srala, advised the council that it was the city's responsibility to maintain those items. If that is still the case, why has it not been done? I am embarrassed each time a citizen or visitor to our city tells me how trashy and dirty and our unkelp our city is. Is that what you want individuals to think about our mayor, city council, and city government? Secondly, strongly tied to my first comments, 
What is the ordinance officer hard to do? Why do we still have old cars, people living in motor homes, trash in yards, grass way too high in some places? It is my belief that the city representative or the ordinance officer should never tell someone, your neighbor complains, so I'm here to enforce the ordinances. The, in, the best way to do that is to knock on the door and identify yourself and say you are in violation of Rome City Ordinance X and proceed accordingly. Government, please clean up our town. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next up is Deborah Beecraft. Ms. Beecraft, are you on the phone? Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay, item one is on the fire. Since we are having so many new houses coming to our ETJ, and I'm going to agree with something Councilman Ethan said a couple of years ago. <laughs> All those in our ETJ should help pay for these services. This is best accomplished by starting an ESD. The fire department would get more money than they get now and could afford to have the paid fire department that they are wanting without it coming out of the city budget. Item two, event permit. The veterans are required to have a permit to hold Veterans Day in the family park. But against our ordinance and with the promotion by, of a park board member by a flyer on her Facebook page, a for-profit company was allowed to make money in the park without a permit. It is against section 1.11.009 use of the park for purpose of engaging in enterprise for profit. And that states, A, no agent, service, or employee of the city having supervision or jurisdiction may rent or allow the use of any said park to any person for the purpose of engaging in an enterprise for profit. This section shall not apply to local civic, religious, or charitable organizations. Park board members should know the ordinances for the parks. Item three, apology. At the beginning of the year, the mayor posted and read a letter saying the water was good and information that was posted stating otherwise was incorrect and that there was no violation on failure to notify. Ms. Northrup, not on duty yet, sent an email stating good strategy on the water issue. Councilman Ethan posted on social media, how did it feel, Ms. B. Kraft, to post incorrect information and scare people? And that's a paraphrase. And then asked the city attorney if the city could sue for screaming fire in a crowded theater. Now, several months later, the city has had to send letters for failure to notify and for bad water. So now I'm asking the city administrator, the mayor, the council, and Councilman Ethan to apologize to myself and to every citizen in this town. This is not the first time information has been posted on social media, and those posting have been belittled only to have the information confirmed as correct later. Maybe before belittling people, the information should be investigated. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The next speaker has, um, Lisa Ann Wilson has requested that I read her presentation. Please expedite the return of the historical plaque to our old city hall. This is a source of pride for many of our residents and those that have lived here before in Old Town Rome. That's all she had. Next one is Ashley Majors. Good evening. Okay, um, today, August 27th, 2020, I spoke with our city administrator, Cynthia Northrup, asking for the video conference login information. She proceeded to tell me everyone is treated equally and it is listed on there. I repeatedly stated I was confused that the teleconference was not listed. She sta stated it was only council in certain colors due to the boxes. So you could see everyone's faces. I still was confused and taken back that I should be able to be a part of it. Despite, despite the pandemic, we, despite the pandemic, uh, despite the pandemic of Rome needs to be moving to the future and having a full open meeting to the public. As I explained to Cynthia, 
I would like to see the presentation of the Builder of Rolling B, the Parks Master Plan, and do not want to wait a few days or to purchase it from the City Hall. There needs to be more transparency in our community. Our neighboring communities had citizens' input, online participation, and online viewing only. What does Rome want to see in the upcoming months? Social distancing back in the chambers? What is it? De uh, Decatur has in-person um, city council meetings with social distancing and online Facebook. Boyd has in-person. Newark is in-person. Haslett has in-person. Justin, you can Zoom um, their meetings in Fort Worth um, as well. Trophy Club has in-person and as simple as Facebook posts that you can watch. What is it that Rome, when are we going to move into the future or be in as, as back lag as we are today? What do you want, council members? Or hopefully we can see on November the 3rd. Thank you. Thank you. The next one is from um, Patricia Mitchell, and she has asked that I read it into the record. Okay. Based on Mayor DeCredico's proposed budget and notes, long-term salaried city employees will see a 1.04% cost of living slash merit increase in 2021. Hired February 2020, Cynthia Northrop receives a 10.5% increase from 80% to, I'm sorry, 80,000. 80,000 to 88,400 annually. Hired April 2020, Sean Dinsmore receives a 12% increase from 65,000 to 72,800 annually. Neither of whom have been here been six months on the job. In comparison, long-term city employees Shannon Montgomery, city secretary, and Sam Love, police chief, earn 61,000 annually, receiving a 1.04% increase to 63,400. At the August 13 council meeting, City engineers said they received a $1.8 million bid for the east side sewage expansion with $200,000 left. That was a $2.6 million bond. Mayor DeCredico did not explain the $600,000 difference. None of the council members asked and citizen questions are prohibited during agenda item discussions. Thank you. We have one more and this is from Brandon Stanley. Mr. Stanley, are you on the call? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you council. Thank you, council people, for having me. Um, the purpose of me being, or not being here today, but being on the phone with you guys today is to introduce myself. My name is Brandon Stanley. I'm the owner of KIS Enterprises, Inc., which is a manufactured housing company in Fort Worth. Um, we are also a developer. We own a development in Parker County. Uh, by the name of Firefly Farms that has been very successful for that community. What we are doing is we, we have recently contracted the property that is the phase three of Bywell Estates. And this property has uh, in the past been owned by several different owners and it's been vacant for many years now. What we are trying to do is develop a planned community or a pocket neighborhood um, to where it, it works really well with the new city park that you are doing in that same area. It's actually adjacent to the city park. We have discussed this idea with Cynthia Northrop and we had a meeting about a month ago with several of the people, um, uh, one, the engineer from Wise County, uh, Aqua Texas or Aqua America, and uh, the fire department. And what we're trying to do is get approval for this property to develop it into a community that's similar to the one we did in Parker County that has a positive effect on Rome and the city and will have a positive effect for revenue as well. The main issue we're running into, as with the people that have previously tried to develop this property, is the ingress, egress. What that means is that there's only one entrance into this particular piece of property and it's from Bywell Estate. Um, and which has recently been annexed, as you guys know, um, by the city of Rome, not recently, but has been annexed. Um, and what we're trying to do is just make you aware that we will, we will be in front of you for plat approval on this subject and uh, let you know that we're doing this in a very positive manner. We want to make it a very positive thing for Rome. If anyone has any ideas on the ingress egress issue that we're dealing with in order to 
move forward, we'd appreciate it uh, so that we can close on the property and begin our uh, planning and development process with the city of Rome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mayor, that concludes the presentations. Thank you, Shannon. All right, we'll go on to our announcements from mayor and council members. So uh, we have two, two announcements. Um, Officer Fruin's last day is going to be August 28th. Um, he uh, is going on to something else, and we wish him well and appreciate his efforts here as the residential patrol officer. Um, so, uh, you know, if you see him before the 28th, uh, just uh, wish him well. And then also okay. a reminder that the special meeting for the public hearing is going to be next Thursday, September 3rd at 6.30 p.m. Uh, so mark your calendars for that. Um, other than that, I don't have any other announcements. Are there any other announcements from the council? Michelle, this council is Joanne. Member McCabe. Council and Member McCabe. Shannon, we did not get the complete notice read from Lisa's request. Can, it's like four lines. Can I do that now? Uh, let, we'll check on that just a minute. Council Member McCabe uh, has the floor right now with an announcement. Okay, just make sure we get to include this, please. So it, it's more of a uh, plea than an announcement. And this is based on uh, previous conversations I've had with my 15 year old daughter. And sometimes I tend to think that children have more insight into things than some of us adults do. Right now, we're all experiencing uh, between COVID-19 and social unrest in the country, things and circumstances that this country has never seen before. Uh, right now is the time for this community to come together and work together and help this city out. Some of our businesses, some of our people are struggling right now. Instead of airing our dirty laundry on social media and newspapers and throughout the county, we need to come together and work together to get this done. Just because we all have different ideas and different opinions on things doesn't mean that we can't be adults and discuss them and come to conclusions that benefit everyone. So I wanna challenge everybody that's listening tonight and anybody that's at home to, instead of attacking people, whether whoever it is, work together and help each other and help the city grow. We have we have people coming, we have buildings coming. Uh, we're fixing to grow 20 to 30,000 people with Rolling V coming. It, expansion is coming and we're not gonna be able to do it while we're attacking each other. We need to work together for the future of this community and the future of the people that are moving here. Thank you, yes, very good. Any other announcements from council members? Well said, Josh. All right, um, Shannon, did you check and make sure that you uh, received and read everything that should be read for the one citizen input? Yes, ma'am, I did read it. It was from Lisa Ann Wilson. It was regarding the um, historical plaque. Okay. It didn't come through loud and clear. We've got three sentences, one word. Shannon, could you please read it again? Oh, sitting up. I, I, did anybody have trouble hearing it? Let me I, just I read it. it. No, no I, I think we've already read it for the record. We've already read it for the record, so we'll move on because I think the majority of people are saying they heard it. Michelle, I'm leaving right. the line and I'm gonna... All right, so we're going to move on to the consent agenda. All items under this section are recommended for approval for the consent agenda. These items are of a routine nature and require only brief deliberation by council. Council reserves the right to remove any item on the consent agenda for further deliberation. We have the minutes of the city council regular session dated August 13th, 2020. I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I have a motion from council member McCabe. Do I have a second on that motion? Council member Easton. All right, all in favor, we'll go down the roll. Uh, Council Member McCabe? Aye. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Priest? Aye. 
Council Member Mikowski? Aye. Council Member Eason? Aye. All right, motion carries. We'll go on to regular agenda old business. We have under B, discussion regarding proposed fiscal year 2020-2021 budget. And this is only discussion. We will have our public hearing next Thursday um, where, where we will take more input um, from the public on the proposed budget. Uh, from council, are there any questions on the budget? Anything, any comments at this point that you have? Okay, I, then I have uh, one thing I want to clarify um, that uh, misinterpretation of information and documents that have been circulated uh, regarding staff salaries, um, claiming that uh, the staff or long term staff are going to get 1%. Um, that uh, is incorrect. Uh, the, the math, the formula has been misinterpreted. Um, so I think. Uh, if, if you don't understand how percent of increase works, you uh, probably will misinterpret that 1.04 is 100% of your salary plus 4%. So that's the across the board budget amount. That is the cost of living. That is a merit. So that's not an automatic. Um, it's also contingent upon where an employee ends up at the end of this current year that in September 30th, 2020, and there are several people that have not had their performance reviews uh, to calculate their salary or their wages for this budget year. So it is an incorrect statement to say that long-term employees are getting less than employees that have been here for six months or less. Um, so I wanna make sure that that's clear to council that um, that, that is not correct information that's being circulated. Um, and we would not treat employees differently from one another, but there is cost of living components, there is merit, there is also uh, salary ranges in comparisons to other cities and where uh, different jobs and performances and duties lie. So to say that everyone across the board is going to end up the same, um, you tell me if, if there's a, a company out there that pays everybody exactly the same thing. So um, it depends on the duties, it depends on your background, your experience or, you know, education um, can determine many factors and where you land. So I, I don't want people to uh, think that we're treating our employees poorly. Um, I, the 4% increase is actually higher than many of the other cities around us. So I um, want to clear up that one point on the budget. Any questions, comments on that? Again, as Council Member McCabe said, it would be more beneficial for us all to work together uh, toward a common goal um, and uh, try to get there as, as level-headed, cool adults. All right, uh, if nothing else on the budget, we'll go ahead and go on to item C, discussion and any necessary action regarding the proposed amendments to the Rolling B Agreement with PMB Capital. I believe uh, we have Peter Pinkoffs on the line tonight. Peter, are you there? I am here. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Can everybody else hear? Great. Okay. Well, I will, I will turn it over uh, to Peter to give us a little more information. We wanted him to come back and um, just, just kind of give us a little more information about uh, what we're looking forward to in the future. Great. Well, thank you all um, for uh, your time tonight and the opportunity to speak again on the on the Rolling B project. As I said uh, two weeks ago, we're um, we're approaching development and um, and and thrilled to um, be getting closer. And so, um, what's on the agenda tonight is. Um, I'll talk about that first and then and then um, go through a series of uh, a short video and a series of pictures to to help give context. But there, there's a development agreement in place that um, was originally adopted in 2008 between the prior landowner and the city of Rome. And then when we acquired the property in September. Of 2019. Uh, we made some 
uh, some minor changes to that agreement um, and um, and effectively had it assigned to uh, to PNB Capital or the the entity that owns the property now. And and what we didn't do uh, at the time was get into given time constraints. We didn't get into um, making some of the uh, some updates to the agreement that really prepared it for development. When it was originally signed, the prior landowner was in the oil and gas business, and you all probably knew um, Johnny Vinson. Uh, he never had any intention um, of developing the property, but 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 knew that having an agreement in place would be helpful. And so so here we are now, approaching a time where we'll be uh, submitting plat and uh, designing infrastructure and we've uh, signed contracts with home builders to bring them um, into the project and and we need to make a couple of what I would describe as cosmetic uh, changes to side yard setbacks and things of that nature. What this amendment doesn't do is change uh, density that's allowed uh, overall in the project or or honestly um, sort of materially change allowed lot sizes or or anything like that. It's um it's cleaning up uh uh some of the uh some of the items around the the layout that prepare it for today's market give builders uh sort of what they're accustomed to seeing and uh and all that and so with that <clears throat> we wanted to do a couple of things um uh after talking to uh the city administrator we felt like it would be helpful to show you all visually um what this might look like uh or an example of what the project might look like as we get going and so um just the caveat here is that i picked a video that's uh it's another project this this one in the video is it's only two minutes long this is called light farms it's in salina this is not a project that we built um but they did a great job on uh on sort of highlighting the community it gives you a sense for density and amenities and that sort of thing uh, and then once we wrap up the video, I'm going to show you a few photos of a project that we have at PNB Capital built in southwest Fort Worth, adjacent to Benbrook, called Ventana. Uh, that's a that's similar topography, similar density, and uh, and that project has about 400 homes in it today, and about a thousand lots or so under construction, and it just gives you a feel for. Uh, for what we build and what you know some sense for what we would plan at rolling B um, as well and so uh, the whole idea in the video and the photos is to uh, to uh, you know sort of give you a representation of what rolling B might feel like um, when we go to construction next year and so with that um, Cynthia you can start the video okay let's see if this works <laughs> so um, hopefully you guys can hear the sound can you see that? We can. Okay, here. Thank you. 
And so as Cynthia moves to the photos, a couple of things that I want to highlight from the video or that that does give you a sense. And here's a photo of Ventana. This is the um, this is sort of a, uh, one of the entry features as you come into the project and you start to see and Cynthia, you can you can click the next one uh, as you start to see. Um, you know the arrival experience some a sense for the density of the homes here in this photo you can see um, all homes that are part of ventana in the background the at the center and what you saw in the video as well as a, a a highly programmed amenity center that includes a pool uh outdoor kitchen area uh in the case of like farms there's a workout facility and um and some indoor gathering spaces and all that and um and the whole goal, I mean, what we're what we're ultimately after is creating community, uh, giving folks the the opportunity to um, to live in a, a, a thoughtfully planned uh, subdivision uh, that has um, extensive hike and bike trails. In the case of Rolling V, it will have tremendous access to the lakes that are there um, that um, that several folks here have seen. Uh, and I look forward to showing um, all of you, there'll be more than a thousand acres of open space in the project um, when it's fully built out. And, um, and, and you know, it's all about for us, uh, you know, designing a quality product, uh, bringing in quality home builders uh, where folks can have a, 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 a terrific home at a price that makes sense for them. And then when they walk out their door, they can jump on trails, they can get on a paddleboard and um, and get out on the lake, they can fish with their kids, uh, they can explore whatever they wanna do and have opportunities throughout to interact with their neighbors. And so um, you can go to the next uh, photo here, um, Cynthia, and you get another look at another angle at the amenity center at Ventana. So we built a, uh, a kid's, um, uh, what we call an adventure park, and so there, it's it's sort of effectively built into the hillside, and so the kids can run down the slope, or they can go down the slide, they can um, climb and swing, and um, and just have a great time uh, there. And then in the background, of course, you see the amenity center and the pool, and uh, and the tra and then trails as well that folks can get out on. And then I think there's one more photo here um, to show. So this gives you, uh, you know perspective on what rolling V looks like when when we start um, in the foreground are the first two phases of Ventana those make up about 400 lots uh, and in the background what you see is disturbed land <clears throat> is about another 600 lots or so uh, that's beginning to be built out now um, and uh, there are there are some builders in this project that will ultimately be uh, in in rolling V um, but as we as we design the project, as we build it out, we try to have uh, you know extensive trails. We have uh, amenity centers sort of spaced uh, throughout so that they're always accessible. And then when we uh, when we uh, sell lots to home builders, uh, we want to offer them lot sizes that conform to um, to what most of their buyers want. You know, I don't claim to be in the in the home sale uh, business, um, but what I can do uh, uh, and have done quite a bit is uh, work with these home builders to um, provide, you know, bring locations uh, available, develop them, provide uh, lot sizes that offer an array of, of, of housing sizes that can, um, and, and lot sizes that sort of can touch on um, folks interests at uh, sort of any different stage of life. And so uh, what we're offering at Ventana, or sorry, at Rolling B in the early uh, phases are lots that are, uh, and I mentioned this last time, 40 feet wide, 50 feet wide, 60 feet wide, and 70 feet wide. And just for comparison's sake, uh, and here are examples as we go through, these are, these are homes on 40 foot wide lots, 50 foot wide lots, uh, these are 60 foot wide lots, and then the last one will be on 70s. And these homes uh, were built by uh, Perry Homes, which is they're in Ventana, which you just saw, and they're also going to be in Rolling V. And uh, and um, and and they build a really quality product. So 
the, this is a chart that shows you lot widths that are offered in some of what we, we believe to be the comparable projects around the Metroplex. Uh, one that I didn't put on here, but that I showed you the video of is Light Farms. Light Farms offers lots that are 40 feet wide, 45 feet wide, 50, 60, 70, and 80 feet wide. And then as you look through these, you'll see we're offering at the beginning 40, 50, 60, and 70. And these other large projects, Viridian and Arlington, Pecan Square and North Lake, uh, and then Walsh Ranch, uh, and really in Alito on the west side of town, uh, offer uh, an array of product sizes from relatively small lots um, to uh, larger lots. And, and I think as we build out Rolling B, you'll see the same thing. And so I say all that just to give context uh, to the requests um, that we're making on the development agreement. This is just a, a map showing where those uh, other projects are. But, you know, to give you context on the development agreement, you know, what we're trying to do is um, is give the builders, uh, is offer an array of products, give the builders um, lot sizes that they're accustomed to seeing. And, and as you look, I think at the, um, Cynthia, I think has prepared a, a reference guide. And then also you can look at the development agreement itself and see red line comments of the changes that we're talking about. Um, they don't affect the number of homes that can be built. Uh, they really just sort of clean up and bring current uh, side yard setbacks and that sort of thing. Um, and with that, I'm happy to answer any questions on this or, or otherwise. All right. Thank you, Peter. Um, just um, before council may jump in, just wanted to cover a couple things. Um, you know, part of what the council's done is is approve a comprehensive development plan, and within that plan, that calls for diversity in houses, um, and then the diversity in houses also encourages retail and commercial growth, which um, we've all been um, wanting uh, to see more of in our area, and that's what uh, many people have, have said they want to see more of in our area. So I um, want to remind everybody that we do have a comprehensive plan that we're working with and trying to uh, use that as our parameters for the choices that we're making um, now and into the future. Um, the city administrator worked with staff uh, to review the um, request from Rolling B. Uh, and uh, They've, they've looked at everything and uh, codified uh, the changes to, to um, summarize them. Um, you know, and as Peter said, it's, it's changing some of the minimum front yards, uh, minimum side yards, uh, the garage setbacks, and um, the percent of uh, maximum lot occupancy for, um, uh, I think it's four, five, six, six different uh, size um, lots. So um, I will let um, any te uh, particular technical questions go to the city administrator. Um, our engineers, I believe, uh, are also on the line, but um, uh, staff have all reviewed this. Um, Public Works has reviewed it, um, and, and they um, are all um, all right with these uh, requests and changes. So uh, is there anything, Cynthia, that you would want to add do the work. Uh, I, think you guys, I think you guys have covered it. I mean, we we did um, meet and go over this internally with with staff, with the, as you said, public works director, and and reviewed also with the attorney. So everybody is reviewed and and um, signed off on what you see. I would say um, I would like to point out uh, a few items in the easy reference guide. The red line document de development agreement is accurate because we ch I changed it in there but I did not change it in the easy reference guide so if you look in um, the information that was provided to you on page um, 99 of 99 um, and this is under the patio homes um, there are a few typos there and um, I just wanted to point those out that what it should be, and it is accurate in the red line development agreement. And that would be on page 99 of 99E, the maximum lot coverage, it says um, 50 
what the words are saying 50%, it should say 75 to match what's in the quotations. And if you go to for you, um, again, what's in the quotations, 1,200 square feet is accurate. Um, the 1,000, it should say 200 instead of four. Uh, but again, those are, um, that was my mistake. I didn't catch it there. Um, it's accurate in the red line agreement, development agreement. Okay. Um, and I believe legal has also reviewed this as well, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. All right, um, questions from council? Um, Looks like Josh has his hand up. Councilmember McKay, go ahead. Yeah, so I think we briefly went over this last time we were discussing this, and uh, I think some numbers were thrown out. But uh, builder speak is a little bit different than uh, the average person looking at homes. So when I go buy a home, I'm looking at acreage. Can we go back over those numbers so people can understand what an acre for a 30 foot home is, what acreage for 70 foot homes is? Um, hard to do the math when we're talking about width. And, and width could be anything depending on how much length is. So can we go back over those numbers and talk about acreage? Sure. Um, so um, so for a 40 foot home, uh, they're, they're 40 by 120 feet. So it's just under uh, 5,000 square feet, a little bit over a 10th of an acre. Uh, a, a 50 foot home is also 120 feet deep. Uh, and so that's 6,000 square feet uh, and is about uh, 0.15 uh, acres. A 60 foot home is 130 foot deep. Um, and so uh, that's 7,800 square feet um, and getting um, closer to two tenths uh, of an acre. And then a 70 foot wide home is 130 feet deep, about 9,100 square feet um, and, and about about a quarter of, a, of an acre. Now, um, those sizes are uh, the design standard that we designed to. So the smallest lot that you would see that's 40 feet wide is 120 feet deep, as an example. Um, you know, given topography and, um, and street layout and so forth, not everything fits in a sort of perfect grid pattern. And so you often find that there are lots that are uh, substantially deeper or wider if they're at a cul-de-sac uh, than, than uh, the sort of minimum standard. And so, you know, as you come out and look at homes when the first phase of the project is complete, you know, the, the largest lot that you'll see won't be a quarter of an acre, it, it may well be uh, half an acre or more, just depending on sort of how the street pattern fits together and it's all uh, laid out. But but these are the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70 foot wide product are um, the what I would describe as sort of the bread and butter lot sizes for uh, all the large builders that are going to be in the project with us here uh, and that build in in some of the fastest selling communities uh, in the metroplex. And so. Um, th these are lot sizes that they're accustomed to uh, buying and building in, and, and it's what they want. And, and, and by virtue of the fact that they're the fastest selling communities, it's what buyers want as well. For some so the largest are looking at approximately an acre? Is that what you're saying? S sorry, Josh, say that one more time. So the largest lots we may be looking at are approximately an acre? You know, in the first phase, I think the largest lot is probably closer to half an acre. We have uh, a little over 3,600 acres out here to develop. And um, and I mentioned, I think that there's a thousand acres or more of, of open space planned uh, for everybody to enjoy. But as we go through the project, you know, we would plan to offer uh, a broader range of lot sizes, including larger lots where you may have some acre lot opportunities and things like that over time. It's just not what we're going to lead with. Um, uh, so, yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it. I just want to make sure that everybody listening understands the, the different ranges of acreage that we might be looking at in that community. So I appreciate it. You bet.
Okay, any other questions? I think Council Member Eason, did you have a question? Uh, no, I just wanna tell Mr. Pencost, thank you very much. Um, I understand that uh, this is all market driven and profit driven and um, if that's what people are buying, then that's what they should have the opportunity to buy. I personally like a larger lot, but that's okay. I've already got my lot. So um, I, I wish you luck. And uh, Thank you. I hope you make lots of money, and I hope there are lots of thousands of happy, friendly families. Thank you. All right. Uh, any any more questions, comments? Uh, Councilmember Mikowski or Mayor Pro Tem Priest, anything to add or questions? You good? No, I'm good, Mayor. Okay. All right. Um, if there aren't any other questions, so the the request tonight is to make these amendments to the agreement. So that would require uh, a motion from the council. Um, is council uh, ready to make a motion on that? I do have one more question for uh, our city administrator. Yes, sir. I just want to review. So the staff, our engineer, um, Sean, et cetera, everyone has reviewed these and they're all in compliance and everything meets you keep nodding your head, so I'm going to take that as the absolute yes. Yes. So, therefore, Mayor, you have your motion. Okay, so we have a motion. I believe I see a second there from Councilmember McCabe. Is that correct? Okay. A motion from Councilmember Easton, a second from Councilmember McCabe. Just to clarify, so I think. Um, we would like that motion to be um, to authorize the mayor to sign and update the development agreement as discussed, as proposed. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Is that your motion, Council Member Easton? It is. Okay, Council Member McCabe, is, are you seconding that motion still? Okay, thank you. All right, we'll go down the roll. Uh, Council Member McCabe? Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Priest? Aye. Thank you. Council Member Mikowski? Aye. And Council Member Eason? Aye. All right, motion carries. We will um, take care of that. Um, thank you for being on the line, Peter. We appreciate it. Thank you all very much. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Uh, and, and Cynthia, would you mind uh, making sure that the video, the link to that video is shared on the website so um, everyone can view that as well? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. All right, on to item D, update and discussion regarding the parks master plan. So I will uh, turn it over to the city administrator for an update on, on the parks master plan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just wanted to update you all on the status of where we're at in that planning process. And um, we had to kind of pivot, <clears throat> excuse me, with COVID and um, do the public engagement a little bit different than was originally planned. Um, <clears throat> I think the team, um, the UTA team did a good job with that. We did do a survey um, and we got pretty good response to that throughout the city. Uh, we also did three public um, focus groups um, per by neighborhood and those went well. We wrapped those up about a week ago. And so the next steps are gonna be, the team will be synthesizing that information, refining the park proposals, um, developing cost estimates, um, and uh, developing a realistic implementation uh, strategies for for you all, uh, for the park, uh, park board and for the council. And it would really kind of fold into that development, um, the comprehensive development plan. So the timeline and next steps then would be, it's still on, on track to present the final report to the parks master plan steering committee. Um, and then they'll, of course, make that final recommendation um, to the council and then um, the team could uh, present to the council um, 
uh, probably in in October, uh, depending on what um, you know what happens at the Parks Master Plan and Steering Committee. All right, great. Any questions from Council on that update? All right. All right, we will go on to agenda item E, update and discussion regarding the Council Orientation Training Handbook. Um, as cast, the City Administrator has been working um, on the uh, schedule and the documents and things in conjunction with other staff members and has put together some things. So I'll turn it over to her to give an update on what she's uh, got so far. Okay, thank you. Well, um, we got um, the orientation handbook out to each council member, so you have that. Um, and this was, of course, in response to wanting to have some training and um, public education, and, and some of that will happen, of course, as you all have discussed in, in workshop sessions. So uh, in your tab five of the orientation handbook, you've got that elected official yearly training. That is just the base schedule. So what we did is we broke it down quarterly based on the normal year. This, of course, is a little bit different year with um, the election getting pushed off to November. So we'll probably change that up a little bit right up front. But so um, that first um, time in, in, in May timeframe, you would have the uh, orientation handbook updated and, and passed out. You would um, have the text of the training on the Open Meetings Act as required and um, have the, um, the most of these are TML classes, um, have the um, governing ethically, so ethics training right up front. And then throughout, um, you see things like um, budget and tax rate webinars um, in November. We have um, new Texas laws in your city, and that would coincide with the legislative session. Anything happened there, we could review. Um, at the city level and um, and then February could be economic development, retail trends, um, how to develop a retail recruitment strategy. You will also note, and I know that uh, Carvin and I have discussed at yeah, your request, different training, additional training that we could bring to the council. And so we can add those in as requested or as appropriate according to what's going on at the time. So I'm certainly open for questions. Uh, Mr. Uh, Council Member Eason pointed out um, an, an item that needed to be changed if there was a mistake in there, um, and that's on page 14. So um, I will be updating that and sending that page out to everyone. I appreciate that, Council Member Eason. And certainly it did get reviewed internally, by the way, but. Um, if there's any other um, items that, or maybe you just think there's something else that should be added, we're certainly open to that. So um, please don't hesitate to let me know that. Um, Cynthia, thank you very much. Uh, I'm only partially through it, um, but I think it's wonderful. I think it's absolutely wonderful. It's like the, uh, it's the handbook. This is what this is the basics of what you need to know, and uh, it's you don't have to go digging. It's it's all very nice and concise and right there. And I think it's so far so far what I've seen. It's very well done. Okay, great, thank you. All right. Uh, one one question: Is this going to be? I mean, once it's finished, is it going to be published and available to the general public? Yes, um, along with the uh, my idea, as long as, uh, you know, I, I would propose what, you know, we're doing the website update. So there will be some additional pages up there um, and we can add a page where we have education um, under the council tab that has all of these on online as well. Well, the, the reason I say that is it lets the citizens also know what they can expect of their elected officials. Yes. So absolutely. These are things we can do, things we can't do, etc. Yeah. Yeah. 
Excellent point. Mayor Pro Tem Priest, yes, ma'am. It also gives uh, folks that are thinking about uh, running for council uh, an overview of what uh, they'll be expected to do in their capacity if they're if they're elected. Um, they'll see that it's a lot more complicated than I can tell you than I ever imagined it would be. And uh, to learn what you can and you can't do, and and the policies and procedures on many many levels. Um, it, so it gives a, a quick, not a quick, but it gives an overview then of what would be expected of someone that was thinking of running. Yes, very good point. Very good point. Um, thank you for your work, City Administrator. That, that's a great job putting that together and we look forward to um, everyone learning a little bit more than they knew uh, before the training started. So. All right, if there are no other questions, comments on the training, then we'll go on to regular agenda new business item F, discussion and any necessary action regarding a resolution approving a negotiated settlement between the Atmos Cities Steering Committee and Atmos Energy Corporation regarding the company's 2020 rate review mechanism filing. Um, this is uh, something that we see from time to time. Uh, several council members have seen this uh, before. I believe we have uh, Randy West on the line, a representative from Atmos, if we have any questions on this. Also the, the city attorney's on the line if, if you need uh, any legal interpretation of the paperwork that you received in your packet. Okay, they're gonna make us pay anyway? All right. Um, Mr. West, do you want to jump in and say anything to the council tonight or? Um... I just appreciate the opportunity or the Atmos Energy does to serve the approximately over 165 customers we serve in Rome. You know, I've uh, been with Atmos a long time and we've had a, I've never seen the capital expenditures that they've been uh, spending in, in our cities and which is a good thing, you know, makes our system safer and more reliable and uh, just appreciate the opportunity that that we have to serve and we appreciate the city of Rome being a member of the Atma city steering committee because that is the way to to review rates because most most of us don't really understand all the numbers that go with that so i think you you can have some good faith in your consultants that negotiate a really fair deal uh i mean it's a big increase but you know due to the covid you know we're still doing our job and get you know providing gas and everything for everyone and uh we've actually uh uh, delayed the implementation of this particular increase instead of October 1st, it's going to be December 1st. That saved nearly $9 million, you know, for consumers. But again, it's, it's a rather large one, but we have spent that money in our system and trying to upgrade it, making a better system. So anyway, All thank right. you. Very much. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, any questions, comments from council? All right. If, if not, we'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the resolution. I have a Council question. Person? Yes, sir. Um, so this is an increase, but what does the increase mean to the individual consumer? Um, it, I, I think uh, it provided into your packet, you know, from from your consultant. But like a residential customer, uh, it's it's going to be. Uh, hang on a second. Let me get where I, where I found that. Nine point nine percent. It's about five dollars and fifteen cents per month increase. For an average resident bill, for residential. Okay, I found it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions, comments on this? All right. Do we have a motion to approve the resolution, Council Member Eason? Is that a motion? All right, thank you. We have a motion, motion from Council Member Eason. Do I have a second on the motion? Mayor Pro Tem Priest, I see the, the second on that motion. Let's go for a vote. We'll start with Council Member McCabe. Aye. All right, an aye from Council Member McCabe. Mayor Pro Tem Priest. Aye. Thank you. Council Member Mikowski. Aye. Thank you. Council Member Eason. Aye. All right, motion carries. 
All right. Thank, thank you, Mr. West. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you. all Have a good evening yourself. Thank you. All right, we'll go on to item G, discussion and any necessary action regarding agreement for permit and code software. Um, you see this back on the agenda, um, uh, several meetings back, uh, we brought an agreement with a, a vendor for permit and code software. We weren't able to work through the negotiations on that with the things that we needed. Um, so we wanted to let you know that we're going to go back to the table um, and look at a couple of vendors and bring you back an agreement at a future council meeting. But we just wanted to give you an update on that. So when we bring it back, that it's not a surprise. So that, that's all we had on this one. So um, we'll go on to future agenda items. Are there any future, Mr. Eason? Mr. Yes. Based upon a requ uh, request made from one of the citizen presentations, um, we don't need to take any action, but I would like to learn more about wastewater averaging for sewage billing. Okay. And see what what that impact could be for our, our city and our residents, and is it something we want to pursue? All right, we have that on our list. Council Member McCabe, did I see a hand? Yeah, if it's possible, can we get an update on the COVID-19 relief funds uh, that we put in for the businesses? Uh, mostly, how many businesses in our area have submitted their applications, if they were refunded yet, um, how much funds were left, uh, that kind of stuff. That way, if need be, we can contact some of our businesses that haven't applied for the relief funds yet. All right, yes, we can do an update on that. Absolutely. All right, any other future agenda items? Okay, if not, then um, if you think of something, uh, email the city administrator, city secretary, um, and we'll put that on the list. All right, so our last item is a motion to adjourn. Uh, Council member McCabe, motions to adjourn. There's a second from Council member Eason. We'll go for a vote, Council member McCabe. Aye. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Priest. Aye. Thank you, Council Member Mikowski. Aye. Thank you, Council Member Eason. Aye. Thank you. All right, motion carries. Meeting will be adjourned. It is 7.33 p.m. Everyone have a lovely evening. Thank you for participating. Bye. Bye.